the head coach of San Diego State, Brian Dutcher, joins us. He will have Malik Pope back with the team, ready to play in a monster game tonight. Coach, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, please, if you would, explain a little bit more about this decision, what you guys were thinking from the beginning of when this all started late last week until today. What has the process been like? Well, obviously, we were all caught off guard Friday morning. It's not what you want to wake up to. We all discussed that, and Malik's name showed up in an a online report uh, that he accepted money uh, from, from uh, the people in the article, which was uh, uh, Christian Dawkins and, and, and the agent. And uh, we, didn't, uh, we didn't know what to think of it at first. We wanted to talk to Malik, and then once we talked to Malik, he just said wholeheartedly and, and with great conviction that that never happened. He didn't know either individual and that they had not happened. And so yeah. we decided that, uh, you know, we trusted in Malik, but we had to do a review and uh, as timely as we could. And uh, I want to thank John David Wicker and Andy Humes for getting this done. I mean, you're talking about a report on Friday that is resolved by Tuesday. And uh, it, it was well handled. I know Malik is very appreciative of all the efforts made by the university to get him back out there. And uh, we're excited to have Malik back on the floor and his name cleared. Yeah, exactly correct. Uh, And head coach of the SDSU men's basketball team, Brian Jutcher, joining us right now. Malik Pope will play against the Boise Broncos tonight at Viejas APM tip-off. And here's the thing, Coach. You know, when I think about this situation, for me, it's a non-star to begin with. I think that this sort of stuff uh, is going to work itself out hopefully soon. But in the interim, uh, with this hitting your team, uh, you know, potentially uh, suffering the loss down the stretch of such an integral member of the team. Has this sort of steeled the resolve of the rest of the room? Uh, do you feel like this has made the team tighter in essence? You know, we will find out. I mean, this is something that uh, we discussed was a possibility with the team that Malik would return. Uh, he's a brother, and so they love their brother. And so, you know, they're overjoyed that he's going to be back with them on the floor. But uh, more important than winning games and, 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 and all of that stuff is having your name cleared. And I think that's the most important thing, that Malik's name has been cleared because those uh, speculated around us that uh, when he was withheld from a game that he was guilty of something. And I said at the time, he is not suspended. We chose the word withheld very carefully because suspended makes it sound like you did something wrong. And so I said, we're withholding Malik until we do a review. And so uh, when your name shows up in an article associated with a federal probe, it's going to draw some attention. And, and so we put the attention to it immediately. Uh, we got the answers we wanted. We did the research we had to do, and we found it to be non-credible. And so we're excited for Millie to have his name cleared and for him to be joining his brothers on the court tonight against Boise. Coach Dutcher joining us, Extra 1360 Mark and Rich Show. Coach, I wonder, and certainly it's not like anything bad came out of it, you still won your game over the weekend, but... I wonder if because it is hard, nationally even, to get that across. He wasn't suspended. He was withheld. Is there any thought in your mind that, gosh, maybe we even played this a little too conservatively, a little too safe, because you there were a ton of names on that list, and very few other universities did anything. Heck, DeAndre Ayton, after the accusation with Sean Miller, he even played in a game that night, so was that a thought for you guys as part of this process? No, not at all. And the thing is, you have to realize with DeAndre Ayton, it came out after the fact that article was written, that he and his attorneys had met with the FBI, had met with the NCAA dating back to the fall. And so they've already done this research. They've been, I mean, this is a story, obviously, for them, that it occurred long ago that, they, that they'd had a chance to visit uh, with, the, obviously, the, the, the feds and the uh, NCAA with an attorney present, and so it wasn't they were caught off guard. This was something they knew, and it sounds like a number of these other schools, you know, were aware of some of this stuff and had long since done their investigation, and even though the NCAA doesn't talk about findings and things that they're looking into, obviously some of these other players had already done some of this stuff as far as background checks and and, and accountability and what they felt happened or didn't happen, and I guess – you know, with our timetables, we were not even aware of it till Friday, where it appears when you read some of this stuff, some of these other schools were long aware of some of these interactions and had time to deal with them over a long period of time instead of over three or four days. So I give our, 
our staff and, and, and our university all the credit for doing all this work in such a timely fashion. Yeah, Malik Pope will play tonight. Game you'll hear right here, extra 1360 against Boise State. You know, while we're on that topic, Coach, uh, it, it, it's pretty interesting. The the DeAndre Ayton scenario and what's laid out, at least as far as accusations are concerned, uh, did any of that raise your eyebrows? I mean, this is a guy that went to high school here. You guys recruited this guy. Was this all just completely like – you you know you you went through this process. Was this out of the clear blue to you as well? I mean, all of this is out of the clear blue. I mean, you know, for me to comment on someone else's situation or or or, or program would be inappropriate. All I can comment on is the fact that Malik Pope's name was mentioned. Uh, we've done everything in our power to clear that name. It's been done so, and so we're excited now that. Uh, Firstly, that Malik's name is cleared. Secondly, that he will be back playing for San Diego State tonight and that we're overjoyed with that outcome. You know, Coach, uh, we're seeing things happen. Uh, as a, as a, appropriately, you know, some of these athletes are making decisions, decommitting from schools who have been named and involved in some of this investigation, the FBI probe into college basketball. Um you came on our show recently and said, look, there's nothing underhanded here, uh, that we do business the way it's supposed to be done. Like a, a Sharif O'Neal, uh, Shaq's son, decommits from uh, University of Arizona recently. Are you guys now going to be able to target some of the talent out there that's, that's searching for a, a safe landing place away from all of this, uh, all of this hubbub around college basketball? We're obviously always recruiting, and uh, no, we haven't done anything with Sharif, and 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 I'm not sure that will happen or not. But uh, uh, just the nature of basketball now. I mean, 40 percent of these kids leave before their junior year of college, and so you're going to be looking in a matter of two weeks another four to six hundred kids out there looking to transfer, and so that's the nature of this business. Whether kids are decommitting or whether they're deciding to change schools, it's the new normal. And so we're part of that. And so we're going to, obviously, at the end of the year, uh, look what our needs are and, and try to uh, continue to bring in players that are about the right things, that are about uh, uh, the culture we have here and that want to win basketball games. Brian Dutcher, the head coach of the Aztecs, is joining us. Malik Pope has been uh, reinstated and will play tonight against Boise State in a very large Mountain West game. Um, Coach, you know, there are a lot of people asking what I think are fair questions about this process throughout the NCAA from top to bottom. And, you know, the idea of trying to keep this on the up and up on all levels and, and is it realistic? So there are a lot of people that are talking change. In your opinion, does there need to be change to the way this all happens? And if so, what would that change be? Yeah, obviously there's got to be change. We can't have cheating in college athletics. It's amateur athletics. Even though there's money being made at uh, all different levels of it, whether it's TV revenue and things like that, these kids are amateur athletes. And so the question is, do we allow them all of the baseball mode or some of the other professional sports to explore being a professional directly out of high school? And I think if that happens, maybe there'll be a greater change where these kids – uh, can go on to professional careers if they're so deserving immediately. And uh, instead of having the thing where they have to come to college for one year, then uh, it changes the dynamics of everything. But I think we know, and I've discussed this, that uh, uh, cheating's occurred for a long time in athletics, whether it's football, basketball, whatever the sport, whether it's uh, boosters. Ten years ago, that was the concern, and now it's agents and, and money managers uh, trying to get into the mix. And so... I think there's always going to be a new normal, but we have to continue to police ourselves, first of all. College coaches have an obligation to do things the right way, to police themselves, to make uh, the sport have the credibility we all want it to have. It's college athletics. You know, Coach, and everybody's hoping for a brighter future here, but the past is what it is. And you guys have had to compete on a lopsided playing field for a long time, talking specifically about recruiting. But you've still been able to lure top-tier talents to SDSU. So how do you do that? Like, what do you what do you do when somebody's out there offering hundreds of thousands of dollars to a teenager to get them to come to San Diego State instead of there? Well, we obviously we're not recruiting that type of player. And we're recruiting great players, and we're recruiting players that are along the lines of those kids. But uh, whether it's their families, the people around them, 
uh, they don't buy into that stuff. And so to say that every kid that's a good player is, is out there looking to take money, I think that's ridiculous. I think there's a lot of good kids and good families that we recruit and that uh, want to do the right things, that want to be college students first and foremost and college athletes, and those are the people we're after. And so there are those that are looking for uh, uh, immediate reward financially, but those kind of students are not uh, coming to San Diego State. Coach Brian Dutch, your huge game tonight. Malik Pope will play. Uh, Coach, we congratulate you and the whole staff on the decision. We've been supportive of it all week, hoping that he's going to get back out there. So we're glad that he is. And, uh, And we thank you so much for jumping on here to talk about it right away. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you having me.